Collaborative Grouping What is collaborative grouping? Well, it is a joint effort of multiple individuals or work groups to accomplish a task or project. Why is it important to use collaborative grouping? Well, students learn how to work well together as a life skill. They have an improved self-esteem and the development of leadership skills. I know you're wondering, in my classroom, how would I implement collaborative grouping? Let me tell you. First, I would establish classroom community. The students need to be in a safe and positive learning environment. Modeling expected behavior of interactions creates a sense of community in the classroom. This builds respectful relationships between students and teachers as well as the students to each other. In order to get to know my students, the next thing I would do is I would do an interest inventory on each student. During the initial week of school, I would make sure each student completed one of these forms. Of course, I would do this in a fun way. I would use some of the examples shown and probably cut them into strips, placing them in a jar and allow students to pull and record their responses. Next, I would do a learning style inventory of each student. What this means is I would gather how each student learns, whether it's auditory, kinesthetic tactile, or visually. I would then need to decide how many students will work in each group. Hmm, the smaller the numbers in each group, the better. I will arrange groups of three or four. The total number of students in each group will depend on the number of students in the classroom, but they will not exceed four. I will then analyze the results and decide who will work together. I will look at the interest inventories and divide those based on interest. I will then also look at the learning style inventories. I will divide those into the three categories, auditory, visual, and kinesthetic. I will look at both inventories and place students into groups based on the analysis of both inventories. Now, let the fun begin. Once I've decided who will be working together, I'll create book cover puzzles for each group, based on the grade level, of course. The pieces will vary from three to four depending on the group size. As a group activity, the students must find the peers who have the pieces to complete their book cover. That will be their collaborative group. Groups will be organized by color. There will be baskets for each group that contain all the supplies they will need for group work for the day. The baskets will be in a specified location each day. The students will know where to find them when it is time for collaboration. Of course the students need space to work, so my collaborative groups will be set up in automatic groups of four. Even if there are only three members, there will be room for four. I will use tables to organize my groups or the desk. When it is time for collaborative group work, the students will move from their original seating arrangement and gather with their groups. Above each group section will be a color card hanging from the ceiling to indicate where each groups should meet.
Group Roles and Management Inside the baskets on each table will be the roll tags. Each student will have been assigned a role at the beginning of the day. They will be able to look in the specified location to see what their role is. A description of each role will be on the back of the tag, either in the form of words or words and pictures for younger students. And of course we can't forget those management skills. These cups will be placed on each table for management purposes. There are green, yellow, and red cups. Of course green is good. Yellow means students need to get back on task. And red means that students should regroup and regain control. Overall, there are many ways that collaborative grouping can be done. As long as it works, it is usable. There is no right or wrong way to do collaborative grouping. I think that the purpose behind the groupings should align, but the ways groups are determined is based on the teacher's expectations.